So now we're moving on to uh, a, a slight change in the uh, program because we have someone from the ESB, but it's uh, Fergal Egan, who's uh, um, the innovation manager with ESB, is going to talk. And uh, delighted to have another good IRDG member uh, speaking. Over to you, Fergal. Thanks, Dennis. And, uh, I'd just like to say, um, Dennis O'Leary was meant to talk here today, but unfortunately, for personal reasons, he can't attend. So hopefully I'll do him justice with um, a bit of a description of what ESB is actually doing today from an innovation perspective. And I suppose um, when we think of innovation in ESB, there's lots and lots of different things that we're doing, and we have been doing since the foundation of the company, but we tend to keep it under our hat. Now, I suppose what you'll see from ESB over the next... Uh, year or two is we're going to try and bring out and engage more with the public as well in terms of what we're actually doing to give people a sense that um, things that we're doing actually matter for, for, for Ireland and for ESB as well. So I suppose uh, just put a bit of context on why ESB is really focused on innovation these days. And really, over the last number of years, the role of utilities across Europe and internationally has been changing significantly. There's a huge amount of competition happening in the sector. Um, there's new players out there. There's people eating the lunch of the old utility companies. There's, a uti there's European directives that are causing downward pressure in terms of the core product that utilities produce, namely electricity. There's, so there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of new players. And really, the traditional revenue sources for uh, utility companies have declined sharply over the last number of years. A lot of the utility companies have ignored disruptive innovation, and it's really it's, it's coming home to roost now at the moment. You've seen some of the problems that the major uh, utilities across Germany and that are facing in terms of mothballed significant uh, investment in generation plant that's now sitting there idle, where the, the new renewable technology are really kind of, really kind of uh, challenging and kind of taking a, taking a grasp of, of the sector. So I suppose what uh, Your Electric, which is the lobby group for the utilities across Europe, did is it, um, it decided to do a survey or an assessment in terms of where the opportunities for innovation were over the coming decade or two decades. And they commissioned McKinsey's to do a study, which they did. And I suppose the, the output of the, of the study was to identify the potential for 70 billion in new growth for the utility sector across Europe out to 2030. So I suppose what does that, this actually mean? It's, and it's, a lot of this new growth is around what's termed the new downstream. And it's services which are very focused on the customer. It's new services in terms of um, distributed technologies, in terms of uh, generation technologies that are closer to home or closer to the business. It's um, using data as a key driver or enabler for new services as well across the sector. It's the use of storage technologies. A lot of new things that are going to come into the mix that really weren't given a huge amount of focus by uh, utility companies over the last decade or so. So I suppose, from ESB's perspective, if the 70 billion potential uh, revenues out of this over the next decade or two, ESB wants a slice of that in our home markets. And our markets are Ireland and the UK primarily. So I suppose we've looked at kind of the outcomes of that survey and our, our own kind of analysis work over the last number of years as well. And we've identified at the moment four priority areas that we're going to focus on and which will kind of um, our innovation will happen in this space primarily over the next three to five years. Um, smart grids, is, and everybody's kind of hears the buzzword about smart grids, and I suppose from an Ireland's perspective, our grid has been already qualified as being the third smartest grid internationally, but we wanted to get smarter because we think that's, that's a very good news story both for Ireland, for all the citizens that depend on the grid, but also in terms of trying to be a driver for further innovation for Ireland and elsewhere. The whole concept of the active cons customer, the prosumer, like, people are not dependent on the grids to provide electricity anymore, or either on the gas networks to provide kind of uh, energy sources in that regard. They're becoming, they're, people are moving more off-grid, are reliant less on the grids. And I suppose what that means is that, obviously, they, they still have energy needs. So from a utility perspective, or a utility kind of company, you're trying to figure out how you can actually service those needs, even if they're not buying directly from you. The other area then, the next area on the bottom right there, is the whole area of the low carbon generation technologies. And this is something that ESB has been involved in for the last decade or so, and we're going to be heavily involved in over the next decade. But up to the right hand side there, the whole concept of big data and the role that data will have to play or can play in terms of driving new business opportunities for all companies is critical. And what we're seeing is that data is now kind of the driver for new technologies, for new services and for new business models. 
And this will be a key aspect for ESB to look and see how we can manipulate and analyze data and to, dri to drive new services. Now, I'm not going to really focus on that in the, the discussion today, but it is a, a core aspect of what we're going to be doing over the coming years. <clears throat> and I suppose there are four key areas that we're going to focus on, but I suppose we always have to be ready in case something else pops up. Um, as a company, we have to be agile enough to be able to embrace the opportunities that that actually facilitates. And part of, what, part of the role that I have in ESB, I work in what's called our Smart Energy Technologies Group, which includes um, some of the sexy parts of the ESB business, like our electric vehicles, our ocean energy, our ESB telecoms business and the like. But as well, what we're actually trying to do from that area is we're trying to improve the culture of innovation across the ESB, both in terms of the agility of the, of the company as a whole to make things happen quicker, but also just the capacity of the people to actually be able to, to kind of come up with new ideas and see them through to fruition and so forth. So there's, there's a lot of kind of things that we have to do over the coming years to actually be, be positioned to actually embrace uh, opportunities as they arrive. So I'll start and I'll roll down through a few of these now and we'll just see kind of some of the things that ESB is doing in them. So from a smart grid perspective, I, I mentioned already that we are the third smartest grid internationally, but I suppose we want to get smarter. And we have a project which has been um, in planning for over about two years now at this stage. And really what it is, is we call it the North Atlantic grid Green Zone. And what we're trying to do is over the counties of Derry, Donegal, Fermanagh, parts of Cavan, we want to roll out kind of leading edge smart grid technologies in those areas, both to have an exemplar network in that part of the country, which will obviously have major benefits for the people that are living in those areas in terms of the robustness and the reliability of the grid, but also it'll kind of, it'll allow kind of some of these technologies to be seen and provide uh, potential kind of, um, you know, opportunities for further innovation in that area. It's a 65 million project and we've received some funding from Brussels under the Connecting Europe facility for it. We've also received some regulatory approval down south and we're pushing the regulator up the north to actually allow us to uh, recover some of our costs in that way as well to make it happen. And it's going to do a lot of stuff. It's going to be fairly transformative in terms of uh, upgrading of the network, in terms of systems there to actually monitor the network in real time, systems there to facilitate self-healing of the network. So if there are faults, the system can actually self-heal itself and make kind of very quick restoration of, of power flows. But one of the key things we're going to do is we're going to put fiber into a lot of the, the HV stations and all the devices that are on the network. And that'll allow kind of more effective monitoring kind of on, in real time in terms of what's actually happening and allow us control power flows, allow us to kind of identify faults where they're happened and actually just improve the real reliability of the grid. There'll also be some further interconnections with Northern Ireland at a distribution level. So but at kind of a low voltage level really to facilitate kind of greater stability of the grids. So this is a joint venture between ESB, um, Northern Ireland Electricity, uh, Airgrid and Sony up the north as well. So it's all parties working together to do something really effective. And what this will actually give is the largest smart grid demonstration project across Europe. We're ready to roll on this. When we get the final approvals through, we'll, we'll kick off the project. And um, hopefully over the next year or two, you'll see some really interesting stuff happening in that area. So that's, that's kind of from a smart grid perspective. And I suppose to continue the, the concept of um, fiber, you're probably all aware that ESB and Vodafone have signed a joint venture agreement um, to roll out next generation broadband across Ireland over the coming years. And this is a very exciting opportunity for Ireland, very beneficial to small and medium enterprises across the country as well, where there'll be real connectivity at speeds of up to 1,000 megabits per second. Um, in 50, we're initially targeting 50 towns across Ireland where kind of the major um, significant population areas. So this is, a, this is a good news story. We're hopeful that um, by the middle of this year, the rollout will actually commence and then that services will start to be available uh, from the service providers subsequent to that. I suppose what's interesting about this is we're actually going to roll the, the fiber out. We're going to string it along our distribution network. So we're going to we're going to string it along, uh, along the poles, as you see it along the side of the road. So we're primarily going to use our overhead network. In some areas, we're going to use our underground ducting as well to actually make it happen. And this will bring fibre right up to the homes for everybody. And I suppose just to give you a sense of what we're doing, that we're going to use the, uh, the electricity infrastructure, the 38 kV stations, some of the lower voltage substations, and even the mini pillar infrastructure to actually bring the, the, the fiber. So we're going to string it along the lines, then bring it through the substations, the mini pillars, and actually straight up to the door of the houses. 
Now, we've done a, quite a lot of work to date uh, in terms of proving the viability of this and proving, the, proving our technical capability. But in Cavan at the moment, we have two major trials ongoing. One which is to demonstrate that we can actually roll the infrastructure out in, in an urban environment, essentially. Um, and you can see there on the bottom of the picture there, we have the, the fibre optic cable is, is on the pole there. And I suppose ESB invested significantly in our infrastructure over the 19, late 1990s and the, the 2000 uh, decade, invested heavily in terms of uh, replacing kind of our pole infrastructure as well. So we now have an infrastructure that's fully capable of supporting kind of the, uh, the fibre optic cables on it. So that the technical trial or the infrastructure trial is proceeding very well. Um, you can see that's just a, an image of um, a mini pillar and the, the ducting around that. But we also, as well, we have a service trial ongoing in the area. So we've identified two housing estates in Cavan, Rocklands and Ochnaskerry, where there's about 450 houses in total there. So what we did is we offered um, free broadband, essentially, to the people in those areas, just so that we could learn the whole experience of how you engage with customers, how you, whether we can kind of see some lessons or learn any lessons in terms of the service that the, the broadband that we're going to roll out actually provides. And it's been pos very positive so far. I suppose we've got about a 60% or a little bit more than 60% of, of uh, kind of a buy-in to this. So there's a lot of people really interested in it. And I suppose what we're doing is we're offering um, the broadband on this trial basis up to October 2015. And we hope over, that, over the year up to there that we'll learn a huge amount from that. Now, I suppose some of the key things is the speeds that we have observed are, in terms of upload and download, 900 megabytes plus. So this is a kind of a real change in terms of what's available elsewhere. And I suppose some of the, the, the commentary that we've got back from the customers has been really, really positive. I suppose people were a little bit sceptical at the start, but when they actually saw it in action and saw the kind of the speed and the performance and the reliability of this, everybody is really enthusiastic about it. We have stories of uh, the vans that are up there when they're actually installing it. The people are queuing up outside the vans trying to get, trying to get the service in. So it's really, really positive. So uh, as I said, we're hopeful that um, the rollout of this infrastructure, which will take a number of years to actually complete, but that will commence in earnest by the middle of the summer, and then that you'll have the, the, the service providers will do the retailing and offering services to the customers from the back end of the summer or the early autumn onwards, hopefully. So we, we've learned a lot, even in terms of how you, how you interact with customers, getting into their premises and doing the actual the, the physical cabling or wiring in, in, in the premises, a huge amount of kind of a, a experience learned from that. So it's been a very worthwhile trial. The next uh, area on the, uh, on, that I want to talk about is the whole area of the prosumer, of the active customer. And I suppose the concept of um, the smart home or the connected home is something that everybody's probably heard a little bit about. And it's really about, it's, it's about connectivity, it's about control, it's about whether you might have smart appliances in your house that'll help you reduce your energy usage and all this sort of stuff. Now, one of the key things here is data, and data being the power or the driver in terms of new services that are offered in this space. So we all know a little bit about it, and I suppose all the key players that are out there, whether they're the utility companies or some of the, uh, the internet companies or whatever, they all have a major interest in this because it's seen as an area where if you can capture the customer, you can capture great value and there's great kind of revenue to be gained from that. So you can see some of the, some of the companies that I'm flying through here, they all have kind of major offerings that they either have out there at the moment or that they're ready to go with. And I suppose it, Google's acquisition of Nest was kind of a key kind of step change in this. And um, one of the technology shows in, in Las Vegas, I think it was, towards the end of last year, the list of companies that actually have products that seamlessly integrate with the Nest device now is, I won't call it frightening, but it's growing and growing by the day. So Google are really positioning them themselves to kind of play a great role in that, in this whole area. And I suppose from ESB's perspective, our supply business, Electric Ireland, is also active in this area. We're at the moment where we're developing a series of trials which we're going to go live with shortly, which would be all around kind of uh, heating, water controls, in terms of trying to make improvements, trying to help people manage their energy costs in that area. So we're also going to be active in that space. But it's a, it's a key area that everybody is, uh, has targeted um, for future growth. And I suppose when you look at this picture, McKinsey did some other work um, in recent years looking at the whole concept of energy efficiency of what it might mean uh, for utility companies. And the advent of all these new um, energy efficiency appliances, uh, new building fabrics and the like, really mean that 
the energy consumption of buildings for new buildings over time is going to reduce significantly down to about a third of what it is today and even when you look at that third of the consumption that will actually be met by a lot of uh, microgeneration that's closer to the closer to the premises. So the reliance that people will have over time on the traditional utility companies, whether they're gas or electric utilities, will actually decrease. Um, McKinsey's view is that homes of the future, or premises of the future, might have only a reliance on the grid for 10% of the electricity or gas that they actually demand today. So that actually kind of puts it up to the utility companies. Come on, guys, you've really got to innovate now. If you want to survive, you've got to look at new, new areas to grow your business over time. So when we talk about the, the low um, carbon generation technology, you probably admit, or some of you might be aware that ESB has a project um, which it's pushing forward to be the first um, utility company to implement full-scale ocean energy technology in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, we've been working on this for a number of years now, and we've identified a site off the coast of, Kil uh, off the coast of County Clare, Killard Point, where we hope to install a five megawatt uh, ocean energy array um, over the coming years. And I suppose for the next two years, what we're doing is we're trying to work out and get the actual planning in place to actually make that happen. We're, we're at the moment, we're engaging with the, the various technology um, providers that are out there just to, to check the, the reliability of their technology and just to see where the technology is going. But um, it's a project that we're very keen on. We want to be the first utility to actually make this happen. Um, thankfully, uh, the, the government is supporting the initiative as well. Um, plus, we also have. Um, support out of Brussels or out of Europe as well to help us along in this regard. The next area in terms of uh, low carbon technologies that we're interested in is the whole area of solar. Now I wasn't here this morning so I'm not sure how much was which was spoken about this but um, we see huge potential for this in Ireland as well. The, the um, Ireland solar resource is equivalent to Germany's if you look at the map there and we all know that solar is kind of is massive across Germany. So what we're doing at the moment here we've actually in our um, Leopardstown facility, we've implemented or we've rolled out um, 30 kilowatts of solar um, of a product that we've actually invested in. ESB has a clean tech investment fund that we've invested in, the U in a US company, 10K Solar. So we've rolled out that um, technology on the roof of that building there so that we can learn in terms of how that technology actually works. Um, and also to develop not just an understanding of the technology, but to allow, allow us to develop um, a business model around that in terms of offerings that we can offer to industrial or business customers in the country. And the other area in that regard that we're interested in um, is the whole concept of battery storage. Um, and I suppose the pictures at the top there are from installations in other jurisdictions. And if you were to look at all the, the implementations across the world at the moment, the amount of storage capacity out of battery banks is less than what we have in the Turlock Hill pump storage plant um, up in Wicklow. But that isn't to say it's not going to ca catch on a lot more over time. And in terms of um, the need for flexibility that electricity grids or markets are actually requiring, um, it means that electric stor electricity storage or battery storage can play a major role over time. And I suppose there's also good reason to believe that the battery costs are going to come down. The, elect the electric vehicle industry and the manufacturers, the battery manufacturers there, are hu putting a huge amount of effort into actually proving the technology and improving it and actually reducing the costs. And we actually think that will have a knock-on impact in terms of kind of battery banks for kind of large state, large scale implementations. So it's something that we're very interested in and we're hopeful over the next year or two that we'll actually have a major um, demonstration project in place. So that's looking at technology. I suppose one of the other things that ESB has realized over the last number of years is that we can't do it all on our own. And in terms of trying to de-risk what we're doing, we see huge benefits in terms of collaboration. And no more so than with the IRDG group that we're involved with, where we're learning a huge amount about how different companies manage innovation and we're taking a huge amount from that. We're also seeing that by actually partnering with other organizations that we can actually, we can make things happen quicker. For example, one, the one on the, the left there, um, we've actually collaborating or we're collaborating with the Dublin Airport Authority, uh, where we're providing services to the, to the DAA in terms of those guys reducing their energy usage across all aspects of energy consumption. Um, the interesting thing here is that ESB aren't an energy provider to Dublin Airport Authority, but our capabilities have been recognised by the DAA and th they're collaborating with us in that regard. I mentioned the Vodafone uh, joint venture, and that's going to be a great success for everybody. But the other one on the right hand side there, um, this is relating to Enterprise Ireland's Small Business Innovative Research Initiative. 
and ESB provided the first seed ID in this regard. So really what this is around is companies identifying a shortfall in their supply chain and sharing that with the SME sector through Enterprise Ireland in terms of trying to give an opportunity for SMEs to develop the technology or the service offering or whatever it might be with the ultimate gain that our aim that the, uh, the utility company would take it on and trial it or demonstrate it or try and kind of bring it to help them get it to market over time. So we are seeing collaboration as kind of really important. We've seen some great successes over the last year. We have another, another number of collaborations that are ongoing in the background that I don't want to talk about yet, but hopefully over the next number of months, we'll have further things that we'll announce, other great stuff that ESB is doing. So that's about all I have to tell you today. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.